Alrighty then, hello and good evening YouTube. Welcome to what I would like to call a beginner's tutorial for uh, Photoshop as far as making cars is concerned. So, in this video we're just going to do a really easy to make car. We're just going to go over the basic um, the basic functions of um, Photoshop when it comes to actually making um, you know vehicles so obviously I have a lot of templates here actually I used to have a lot more but I don't want to talk about what happened <laughs> to all those um, yeah you gotta download the templates obviously I mean if you try and make a car without a template it's literally 500 times more difficult so just don't it's not worth it your time is valuable and it's not and you don't want to waste it using a non-template so we're gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna automatically have some templates I mean the easiest way to actually go about getting those is just to go to the big evil don't shut up Photoshop go to the big evil racing dot com and I think it's under painting the internet's slow it's North Dakota what are you gonna do yeah there's some there's some here but this is like the important ones these are the uh cup templates for BR Gen 6 obviously um, this one's for CWS 15 these are the ones that I'm using except I modified them so that they have the twisted T truck series logo on them basically the point is find the template you want find a professional goddamn template if you want to I don't care we're gonna make a truck so what you're looking at right here is the interface of Photoshop uh, this function right here this is just your mouse literally it, it it's just to select things so if you want to move something around there you go just do that um, I have my uh, transform controls on always check this because it makes um, actually reshaping and rotating stuff that much easier and faster so that it isn't annoying but we're not going to do that obviously right now um what else yeah that's basically what this does it just moves things around this is your um, box selector uh, it's actually called a uh, rectangular marquee tool <laughs> but it's just basically a box selector you put it around you can create a box like this then you put it over the layer that you're using you can go to this and basically cut that in half and move around the piece that you want or just outright delete that piece if you don't want it so there you go but I'm not gonna do that so the way that you do that you can select something like this right but you actually have to have that part of the uh, car selected in your layers tab over here so I'm gonna move to a different layer the mask so the so the gray part around the truck is gonna move around once I obviously click that and then there you go so you have to be on the correct layer and you have to be on the correct tool obviously to move things around so that's really basic stuff so now this this right here is your best friend also if you go underneath you can get a circle if you want I never use anything else besides rectangle and circle so now this is gonna be your best friend the lasso tool so it is on by default as this lasso tool which is basically a free moving you can make the shape with your mouse as as the whatever the way you want it to I'm left-handed so this looks terrible and I'm using a right-handed mouse so that's why this looks terrible but that's basically the lasso tool now this is a very good tool to use if you're being um, um, this lasso tool what is a good situation for this one because there are good situations for this lasso tool and in other situations I'm usually using the polygonal lasso tool and let me show you why with the polygonal lasso tool you can click and it'll make straight lines so this makes it really really easy to just follow to just trace something so if you want to just make the hood of the truck a different color you can just follow this and trace it along patience is key when making a paint scheme nothing that you make is gonna turn out good if you try and rush it the more uh, care that's actually put into your selections and your colors and obviously using your uh, lasso tool just to move things around I've already done half of the hood so I may as well just finish it off just to show you what it's like 
But yeah, just patience is key. Absolutely, just absolutely pay attention to where you are on the thing. Don't worry if you screw something up. You can always just undo things. Um, what I was using earlier to uh, revert back to the original was is what you call the history panel. And if you make a whole bunch of mistakes, or you think you know what you're doing, and you go into it, and it's like, okay, this looks like shit. I'm just going to not have that happen. You can go back in the history panel and completely remove those changes from existence and go back to where you were before. So there you go. So using the polygonal lasso tool, I was able to select all of the hood and just the hood. Now what I'm going to do is going to go down to this very bottom, this very bottom layer here. Your template could be different. I don't actually know what the professional templates look like. But I'm going to right click and do layer via copy. So now what that's done is created a new layer entirely from that selection that I made with the polygonal lasso tool. And if I bring this up like that, well now the hood's pink. That's 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 great and all, but that's kind of gay, don't you think? Let's not have a pink hood. Let's let's be manly, and have a super edgy black hood. There we go. I'm actually gonna turn off shading just so that you can see the difference in color in here. So there you go. You want your super edgy black hood? You can also have a very um, you can have bloodlust red, bloodlust red. You can also have um, vomit yellow. That's. Vomit comes in all shapes and sizes, so I don't want to call it Vomit Yellow. You can also have, um, I don't know, a very bright blue or annoying orange orange, you know? It's all like, it's, it's a bunch, it's just, it's just basically, the, the, it's like Scarface, the world is yours. The world is yours when it comes to making paint scenes. So... Well, like this, like I said, this is just a basic PowerPoint. I mean, not pow. What the PowerPoint? This is a basic Photoshop tutorial. So we're gonna do the most easy thing that I can think of, and that is make an Alan Kowicki tribute scheme. So let's do this. Alan Kowicki seven. Let's make a let's make a tribute scheme to Alan Kowicki in the truck series. I already made one of these at one point. So, but you know what? Let's be fancy. Let's make an inverse. Let's make an inverse. Of this scheme so we'll have this be white and this be orange there we go now we're talking now we're now we're getting fancy all right so the easiest way to do this is just look at the thing that you're trying to uh, replicate and it's almost always best to just do it in the same screen so we're gonna move over to this tool now this is the uh, rectangle tool it's a sh it's a basic shape tool so you can just uh, make any shape that you want if you hold down shift it makes a square and if you hold down alt uh, you can build your um, your shape from the spot that you made your mouse at. So if I want to start here, then I can hold down Alt and we'll come out from the center. Now that's very useful when making circles, but it's not really that useful when making rectangles. So There you go, we made a rectangle. Isn't that fancy? Man, I'm just the greatest paint scheme artist that ever lived. Okay, so let's make that Alan Kawiki tribute scheme, except it's inverse. And there you go. <laughs> it's just that easy. Now obviously you're going to need to line things up on the, on the nose and the rear, but I don't actually know what all the templates look like. I know the professional ones from, uh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? What's it called? I don't actually, the, 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 the I don't remember what it's called, but, um, uh, it's what everyone uses basically as their templates, so... Get an Alan Kawicki orange. That's kind of hideous. That's not quite the right shade. We gotta go up over here a little bit. Yeah, eh, close enough. There you go. Nice. Stretch it out a little bit on that side. Didn't go far enough. Well, there you go. So now the top, obviously. Um, what you can do is just render these on the Mod Squad website so that you can see what they actually look like before putting them into NR 2003 because that's what this is. This template is an NR 2003 template, which makes it easy to render out and actually see what it looks like before you actually open up the game, which is why we over we go over here to this site, render submissions. Um, you don't need to see my uh, password, so let's just do that. Boom, baby! Ah, oh, man. Thinking with portals. Okay, um... 
I want to show you one of my favorite paint schemes that I've ever made. We'll render it out in the mod squad just to show you what it's like. But yeah, this is just basic stuff here. So uh, let's open it up. Oh man, the scheme is beautiful. Oh, it's so good. Oh, this scheme is so good. I love it. Anyway. So I'll just render that out. But yeah. So there's a few things that you can do. We're going to obviously, it's obviously going to take a while for this to actually render out on the website. So we'll just set it in here. Tell them to uh, render it out like the slaves that they are. I actually have this saved somewhere else, but I just want to demonstrate it, you know. So there you go. Submit. So, a couple more things that I want to actually touch on before we uh, move on. So, what I want to do is show you some shadows. Shadows are vital when it comes to sponsors, especially in numbers. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pick out some random... I have, a, I have a whole bunch of numbers saved. Let's see which one. I'm going to close my eyes and just scroll randomly. We're going to do the... Wow. By sheer coincidence, we're going to... Sheer coincidence, we're going to do the 48. So I'm only going to... No. I'm only going to select one layer here. All right. So it's the number 48 Hooters throwback Toyota in the truck series. You see, you can see I've, I thought this out pretty damn well. All right, so there's the 48, obviously. We're going to rasterize this layer, otherwise it's going to be impossible to maneuver. So there you go. So that 48 looks pretty bland, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't really pop. Well, how we're going to do that is we're going to duplicate this layer. So now there's a 48 copy and the regular 48. The 48 is this, the one underneath the 48 copy is the one underneath it in the actual um, Photoshop file which is why we're going to adjust this. So now we're going to give this a nice shadow. So now, the layer on top, this 48 copy is white. The 48 on the bottom that you can't see right now is black. But we're going to use the arrow keys. Oh my god, now we have a shadow. Oh, it's beautiful. Kind of. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, you know. How's this going? It has been submitted but I highly doubt that it's finished rendering out in, in the actual um, website yet, so that's going to be interesting. So there you go. That's basically what you do when you want a shadow. You just take the, you take the layer that you want to make a shadow on, you duplicate it, you change the color, so obviously we're going to make it, I don't know, red, I guess, and then you move it with the arrows, and there you have it. That's how you make a really easy shadow. Now, something else that you might want to make occasionally are uh, obviously some swoops. Swoops are fun. Now, the easiest way to make swoops are like this. You make a random oval, all right? Duplicate that layer. And we're going to move this. We're going to, uh, what we're going to do is take the color overlay, and we're going to do the paint dropper here. So whenever you're doing the color overlay, it automatically will do the paint dropper when you go onto the onto the file, so I'm going to select the color of the uh, truck, and now I'm going to move I'm going to move this down, and there you have it. It's a bit of an eyelashy swoop. Obviously, you can make it more thick in certain spots. You can uh, give it a you can actually give it a uh, a stroke. And not one of the ones where you uh, where you're writhing on the floor in agony and half your brain shuts down. Not one of those strokes. But you give it like that. Eh, that's not that good, is it? It's not really that good. Not gonna lie. Um, that's not really that interesting. I'm a good tutorial maker. Um, but yeah, I want to show you a good example of. Uh, using ovals to your advantage. See, it's a good thing I have all these paint schemes already because if I actually had to make these on command I'd flounder around. So here you go, here's a 2000, I don't know, Bobby Labonte Tribute 43. So you see this? Every single one of these was its own individual um, oval. All the way down to the uh, actual 
gray strokes here. That was its own oval. So basically, what I did was I started out with just a regular oval. We painted it uh, blue. Painted it blue. And then slowly made it larger, I guess. That's probably what I did, was slowly make it larger. Because you uh, you can't see the left side, but this this is way too strangely shaped for it not to be. So there you go, obviously there. Then you go to uh, that, and you make it gray. That I, I scaled it down way too much there. There we go. There we go. And then I uh, duplicate the layer underneath. And then go like that. This is the purple one. Whoops. I did the wrong thing there. Don't worry, it's easy to fix. Just move layers around. And then just like that. Then once again, make another one underneath, move it out, and paint it gray. And you can basically see the process behind making one of those paint schemes. At the end of the day, it's just really just patience, focus. You're not going to be making a paint scheme like this straight out the gate. You're definitely not going to be making a paint scheme like the David Bowie one. Straight out the gate. But it's definitely something to strive for, okay? Start out with your Hooters tribute scheme. Start out with something like this. Just understand how shapes work. Um, obviously, if you want to cut a 48 in half for no reason. Boom. There you go. That's actually half decent. Wow. Wow. I just accidentally made an interesting color choice for numbers. That's actually kind of creative. That was on pure accident, people. Anyway, yeah, I think you get the idea. This is pretty much as simple as it gets. The quick selection tool is good for when you're actually, um, it's not really good for that much when you're making cars. I never use that. There's an eyedropper tool, obviously. So you can pick the color. See, I picked the white, and now it's white over there. Patch tool, not useful for this. This is the um, knife tool. No, the pencil tool. This just lets you draw, basically. Somehow, some way. Oh yeah, you actually have to go on to like the actual layer itself here. So we go on the 48. I don't know why that's not, oh yeah, it's because of the, the selection. That's why that's not working. See, now I'm just drawing, so yeah. I never use that, I never use that. The eraser is good for really minute adjustments. The paint bucket tool is great for um, changing colors en masse. So you want to make the four and that there blue. Well, you actually have to select it first, obviously. Um, I'm just trying to, I don't know. Well, I did something. Smudge tool is not that useful. Burn tool is not that useful. Text is okay, but it really really stands out from other graphics obviously always use the shape tool I never use the zoom tool I just use the alt key and then use the scroll wheel just like that and um, what else do I use oh yeah I always use color range whenever I'm picking out sponsors so if I just want like a random sponsor like let's do let's find a logo here I want a ran I need a what's a what's a monochromatic logo um, QVC it's the first thing I can think of is QVC still a thing? I guess it is because I don't remember this logo see I remember that logo I don't know this logo so obviously if you want QVC to be your sponsor I don't know what, what's wrong with you if you do <laughs> but um, yeah so you just want to select the logo well here's what you do you go to color range Click on the red part, invert, and bada bing, bada boom. Would you look at that? We now have the number 48 QVC Toyota. That was supposed to be an Alan Kowicki tribute scheme. As you can see, this has been a very well thought out video. Well, I don't know what else to say. Um, this is the most important stuff that you need to understand when you're making a paint scheme. It's just trial and error. Mess around with your templates. 
mess around making shapes. Try and make some tribute schemes if you can. But, um, this is basically the most basic of basic stuff that you can do. So, um, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time when whatever I make. If you want a follow-up, I don't know why you would because I'm terrible at making tutorials, but hey, what you gonna do? Um, yeah. So, this was a terrible video, but I hope you enjoyed. Bye!